Maintenant, vous m'entendez Oui, je vous entends. Ah bon, très bien, parfait. Ah, super You have already talked in the past about uh, the difficulties you have encountered in your career and how you didn't like your own voice, for example. Has there been a, a decisive moment that helped you to get where you are today? Yes, there are, there were many, and there are many moments that uh, that changed, of course, the course of my of my young career and my career. I didn't have a red carpet in front of me. Uh, Uh, 10 years ago, so I had to fight. I heard a lot of you will not make it or you're not interesting enough or we just want to hear you in German and no other language. And so it was a it was a long fight for me. But today I have to admit that I have to thank also all the people who rejected me uh, because first it is a it is a work, this world of opera and classical music, it's a world of rejection. When you are taken, it means that 20 people are rejected. So you know from going from being part of the rejected to being part of the people who are taken is a, a lot of chance i think the, the 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 chance that i had to to meet the right people at the right time and fail the auditions i failed a lot of auditions i was not good for them i was not good enough i was not in a good shape and finally today i see that it was a good thing that i did not do a great audition in such big houses because Maybe if I had a good audition, they would have given me things too soon, too early, and I would yeah. have not been able or ready enough. So in, I think it's a lot of, this is chance. Even failing an audition, even not being good enough at the right time that we think is also a big chance because it allowed me to work on my own, to work more, to, to be more, uh, to have more of an introspection about what could I do better, also about my voice. The déclic for me was, at some point, I decided, decided to stop working with the, with any professor. You know, in this opera world, it's common sense for people that we always have to, to have a coach, to have a, um, a singing professor and everything. So I thought I need one too. And so I searched for different professors. I met very interesting people, but I decided when I was 27, 28 to work alone to work on my own, to only trust my ears and my feelings. And actually there is one person who knows how I want things to sound with my voice and it's me. After I have a, I have a great relationship with my, with my coach, um, Carrie Ann Matheson, who is playing with me um, uh, for recitals. And we've been working a lot in the past years in Zurich. Uh, but never vocally. It was always about finding a good strategy for the roles, for the concerts, musically, but vocally, technically, I do my own work. And I decided to accept that I don't really like my voice. I decided to accept it and to be at peace with it. And that the most important is if it pleases an audience and if I can tell a story to an audience. So. Now I'm at peace with it. I still don't really love my voice, which I think is a good thing also, because I don't think it would be good for me to be in love with my voice. So I think it's a good balance. And uh, for now it works. And who knows what happens tomorrow. I'm sure also it helps other young singers to hear you talk about it this way and to say like rejection and, um, and, yeah. audi uh, and auditions that don't work is part of what brings you where, where you are. Yeah, it definitely is because in the end, uh, we think we have to be ready when we are 23, 24, 25. The reality is some people can, some people are ready when they are very young and some people are not. And even though I wanted to be ready, I wanted to make auditions for big houses and I wanted to make it work. Well, I was not ready. The voice was there, the potential was there. I could sing a few arias, but holding a whole role on stage, holding a whole series of performance was a different thing. And things came at the right time for me, even though I wished they arrived before. They did not, and in the end today, I can say it's a good thing, but I can tell you that five years ago, I was frustrated as hell because I was, I was part of these, these young singers who are just wondering why does, doesn't it work or why doesn't it work the way I want it to work? And that's, 
I mean, of course, you're not happy when you fail an audition. You're never happy. But with distance uh, and with time, you also realize that it's, uh, it's for a reason. And it makes us grow. It made me grow. It made me want more. The more people would tell me, well, we don't think you can do that. Well, we don't think this is the repertoire for you. Or we don't think you can sing the big uh, tenor repertoire. The more I also doubted and I thought, well, maybe they are right. Maybe I'm not able, but my body was moving forward and it was working for me. So I followed that, even though sometimes I had no hope anymore, but it was, it was going in a direction where I was working for it. So your program includes many um, romantic works. Is that mm -hmm. just um, by accident or is the romantic era your favorite? It's, I don't think it's mostly my favorite. I think it's where my voice works the best at the moment. I have also to, to serve the audience and the repertoire where I can serve it the, 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 the best possible way. So for now, yes, the voice works well with tortured people, tortured character, tortured uh, melodies and, and the leader. And it works like this and why not? And for now, it's like this. We are really staying uh, with my team and uh, we are thinking about the future. For now, it's where it works to sing Romeo, to sing Werther, Hoffmann, to sing all these very tortured uh, uh, characters who are suffering and, and, uh, and being socially awkward. And uh, it's, it works. The voice serves it well now. And also, I think it is where it doesn't go too far in terms of, um, of uh, voice, of weight vocally. I don't put myself, I do put myself in danger, but not too much that it would, uh, it would uh, hurt my voice or hurt my, my ability to sing on stage. When you prepare for such a leader recital, how do you work on the, on the poetry part? In my case, it is always a work in progress because I know that, for example, Les Nuits d'été or Berlioz, I cannot sing it today the way I want to sing it. And I think it's important for me to not think that I have to be ready to sing something, but that I propose to an audience a work in progress. Because if I think on stage I am ready and it's exactly the way I want, then I don't think it is worth it. I think it's also interesting to bring to the audience a work in progress that is not finished because it's never finished and I will never sing Actually, the reality is that I will never sing it the way I really want, the way it is in my, uh, we say in German, the, my Vorstellungskraft, my imagination, mm -hmm. where I want it to go. And that's the beauty of this. And for example, uh, for the texts that I, that I sing, every time I sing it in a different place, it's a new taste. It's a new try. It's a new experimentation because I don't think it should be a, like, it shouldn't be presented like an album. And it's, it's a fatigue. It's a definite and engraved and forever like this. Every, every performance and depending on the acoustic, depending on, I don't know, the weather, depending on the time of the year, it brings a new color. It brings a new version of it. And this is what, what I like about this. Now you have mentioned a few times also opera roles that you uh, sing. You're also an acclaimed opera singer, not just a lead singer. Um, how do you manage the transition between the genres for your voice and also for, for preparation for everything? It, these are very two different worlds. Actually, I really see now that I prepared myself when I studied um, to be an opera singer and not a lead or melody singer. Because when uh, people asked me to begin to do recitals, I, I saw that my knowledge about melodies and leader were, was very limited. It is a much more um, self-centered and egoistic uh, exercise to do recitals because it is all about you and your voice and the accompanists, which is nice. I'm beginning to enjoy it, but clearly my preference for now is clearly to go to opera because it is being part of a story. I'm not alone. We are a team. I like this idea of being a team with an orchestra, with a conductor, Uh, to be part of a bigger thing. A recital for me is still feels quite selfish. And uh, I prefer to be part of a story than to be uh, uh, trying to attract the light on me. But 
it also goes with my career now that uh, opera houses and and uh, concert halls wants to have me for a for a recital so i have to embrace it and i have to find also some pleasure in it but i think the most important in the end is not that i find pleasure in it it's that i can i can uh, convince the audience and the, the critics and the, the people who hired me and whether i'm in a comfort zone or not clearly i'm more comfortable on stage for opera but in the end for uh, for leader and melodies it is an exercise that I'm learning now. It's, I'm very new in this. So to someone who has never been to a Liederabend in their life or to a recital vocal, um, what would you tell them to, to convince them to come to a recital at the Philharmonie? It's very limited in terms of intensity. So it's not something that is going to be aggressive. It's something that is very calm, a Liederabend, because you have a piano and a singer, this is very intimate compared to a big orchestra, which is sometimes very, how to say, uh, spectacular. Uh, a recital is something much more intimate, much more uh, like taking the time for a little thing that we don't know, like trying a new dish, trying a new type of movie. Uh, like say, well, you never tried Star Wars. Well, what about you try? You never tried recital. What about you try? And you never know, maybe you get out of it saying, never again. Or you say, well, maybe I'll try, but maybe with a lower voice or a woman's voice or anything. But I would say to people who have never tried something because they think, oh, it's not my thing, to just open their minds and try. Because maybe I am not the one who will make them love Lita Abend, but maybe I will open the, the, the wish to go to others that they will like. So I think... To invite people like this to say, try a new dish, try a new movie. That's maybe the only way. Great. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Thank you very much, you too. All the best. Bye.